Everything went down, and uh, I was Mirandized and told that I have the right to contact my legal counsel or a lawyer. Uh, I did not. I was incoherent. I was sedated the day, the night before, as I was taken to the hospital, uh, and they sedated me. I was I was sent to the OCD, OCDC, or to a Carlton Detention Center. I was put in segregation in some absolutely inhumane living situations, not just for me, for everyone that wasn't there. It was so awful and the prison people were quite abused. It, I, it seemed that they think if they don't physically punch you in the face, they think everything else is all right. Uh, and then I was not allowed to, I was not allowed to shave, shower for days. Uh, I was denied the basic human rights, dignity. Uh, was stripped naked, searched more than once. Uh, between within like five minutes between between each searches and things. And then I was transferred to segregation in maximum security where I was put with with people who are in maximum security in prison. It was mortifying, terrifying, it it was in no way anything that I I have ever expected from Canada and in Ottawa. It was a disgrace to see it in the backyard of our Prime Minister and Minister of Institution and Public Safety. I was under CBSA authority and they were responsible for my well-being. I bet I had I was denied my medication for days, which resulted in me getting seizures. Uh, I was told and I told them that my doctor said I cannot cut my medication off. I have to gradually stop it. And they just cut me off, which resulted in me getting having four seizures and ended up fast uh, air on the floor four times. I was taken to the hospital once and three times I was I was not. I was not even I did not get medical care or anything. Well the second time I woke up hours later uh, on uh, in, the, in my cell on the bench. Uh, two times I woke up on the floor hours later, swimming in water. They came, poured water on me. Obviously, and just uh, it was the least I could say that it was a disgrace. I I have never expected that. I wasn't ashamed to be identifying myself as a Canadian, but I was absolutely mad. Not just for myself, also for the sake of our civil rights. I mean, even if people are criminal, that does not justify the way the way people are being treated. And I'm, I'm out of words. I can't. I can't. I can't describe how awful it was. And how long was it before you were allowed to contact your lawyer? Uh, ten days. Ten days. Ten days. I was. I had a hearing, and in the in my hearing, I. I told the judge that I was Mirandized but haven't contacted my lawyer and I'm not allowed to use the phone. 
what phone and they, I wasn't allowed to use the phone until four days after that or three days. So uh, why are you back in America? It's home. Um, it's it, I, I'm like this probably doesn't make sense to a lot of people but I don't think I felt safe until I actually left then seeing Alberta seeing Alberta on the map feeling that I'm wrong it's there is it's where I belong it's, it's actually home and how does it feel to be that alive again human safe as in I can see my friend touch people I can brush my teeth and take my and take showers and turn off my light what's next for you I think I'm back in the loop I'm back I well, I wasn't I was gone to auto just as any person would go to for business and come back home and right now I have no idea I'm just I'm still in shock I I still can't believe what happened and I still can't even wrap my head around it. I'm sorry? What's the latest on your bid to stay back in Canada? Uh, apparently it's at the at the latest at the last stage of the uh, of the process. It's been ex the process has been expedited as I was told or as the judge was told by by the minister representative. Uh, which may leave me without a time frame currently, but it's it's actually being rushed. And has the government told you anything else that they should or shouldn't be doing while you're here? Well, apparently um, I'm supposed to get the CDSA's approval prior to deciding to move from my house and prior to deciding to travel, even though I gave them no I gave them notice that I was I was traveling to Ottawa 48 hours in advance. Uh, I'm to re um, I knew conditions were imposed on me. I have to report weekly, I have to live with the person who bailed me. Uh, and it, the conditions the conditions are so tight and so narrow that it's it's it, they treat you as, they are I'm being treated as if I'm uh, if I'm actually a criminal if I've killed a bunch of people and now I'm on bail and they want to make sure that um they have they see me and they are watching me all the time it's it's offensive and absurd I finally I, I can feel safe. I'm like, finally there is, there is some familiar faces, finally I'm at home, I'm in Edmonton Airport, I'm finally in YG, I'm, I'm starting to regain my senses and feel alive once again. And uh, this, this is getting, I guess, is it costly to fight this? Or to it absolutely is getting absolutely ridiculously costly, it's, I'm like, so far there is, I had to spend over that sixty thousand, uh, and it's not that's not even close to what I have, to what I still have going on. And it, between the war conditions and me not being allowed to work before and giving a war permit for like four months, while I have to deal with this that just came up and then it, it's it's getting insane. Where do you get the help for your legal costs then? I mean, do you have family helping? Do you have friends donating to you? I, I, that's apparently what happened. I did not realize that, but I ended up having great support network, great people that have been donating. Uh, they created a GoFundMe account and their uh, Save John Uh People have been donating from Canada and from outside of Canada. From all over, all across the nation, uh, I've been receiving support, whether financially and morally, and it's been, it's, it's both are what, what kept me moving. I don't think I could have done this by myself. There is still that life that's hanging over my head, 
they are not gone. Uh, it's safer. I actually, this is the place. I, this is a familiar place. I have people I know. I have friends. It's there is a safety in the sense of home, but uh, I am still threatened. So. Do you have any idea who's threatening you, or who you want to harm you, or who are you saying who might be harming you? Well, this. Um, uh, directly, I am and I'm already sentenced and by uh, the Palestinian, the West, uh, within the West Bank, by Hamas, and by my family to death uh, for my conversion and my, my, which is considered apostasy, and for being gay. Um, and indirectly, um, being currently, and my the threat is hanging around over my head is by immigration and CBSA that are trying to send me back to where my life is most certainly will be ended. However, I and to my core, I've always been conservative myself, politically. However, I just found out that our civil rights, our social, our, we have stood, we don't, uh, there is, we have social obligations. We have, we are obligated to keep our society intact. In from all the aspects, you can't just take care of, of one aspect. And um, I never identified myself as to be a socialist per se. But what I witnessed in the last little while is rather alarming. I am. I have been realizing that uh, if, if certain organizations are not doing their jobs, that it's, their bosses are on at fault. And if their bosses and the ministers are not doing their job, well, it actually tracks back to Mr. Harper himself. Someone is in charge and someone needs to implement that change and make sure that it happens from all sides. He's not. He haven't. He wasn't elected as prime minister to take care of our economy, and that's it. He was elected to take care of Canada as as a whole, and um, that's not what I saw. That's not Canada as I know it. I've known it, and that's not something Canadian ever expect. I think.